G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Uh, good news, the CGX is back. The CGX that I had sent away for repair, uh, it's been a while, there was no sort of urgency because I've got the new mount now, the Skywatcher uh, EQ, EQ8. It's always such a mouthful, the Skywatcher EQ8 RH Pro, which is a rock solid, observatory grade, fantastic mount. But I've wanted my CGX back so that I could do some portable stuff. And portable, it's a big mount. Um, but I figure if I've got a spare mount, I can use that for other things. But do I remember how to set up the CGX? It's been such a long time and I'm so spoiled now as a observatory owner. I really don't have to do anything from night to night. I don't even polar a line. Oh, and by the way, my failure will be subsidized by the fantastic sponsor of this video, Brilliant. Pretty legitimate, right? Brilliant have reached out because they recognize the value of channels like these where scientifically minded people are doing things for themselves and expanding their knowledge base. More on Brilliant later. Let's give it a go. I'm going to set up my CGX on the deck and see if I still remember how to do it. And we can learn from my mistakes along the way. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Look, I'm not going to complain about the weather, even though me just saying that is probably a complaint in itself. But something very special happened during the creation of this episode. I'm going to go through and show you how I set up the CGX mount again, a mount that's been sitting in a box in my office for a little while. But after that, I went and did some solar astronomy and I took a photo of the sun that's probably the best photo of the sun I've ever taken. And I don't really know why, so let me try and unpack that later. But first, Let's set up the Celestron CGX mount. What do you think, Benny? This look like a good place. This is where I used to set up. In fact, before I had an observatory, there was just grass here and I would set up here. Now, we don't have the best view of the sky, but it did work for a very long time. Anyway, so the first thing we'll do is set up the tripod. Now the CGX has these lines as you pull out the legs so you can get them roughly level, which is a good thing to start with. There is a front. I just don't remember which one it is. I think it might be the gap between these two wide legs that has to point south. Sort of over there somewhere. Then there's an accessory tray. Most of us don't actually need an accessory tray. Maybe if you're a visual astronomer with eyepieces. Um, but it's still good to put it on there because it offers this support on the legs. It keeps everything pretty stable. And before we go any further, we want to make sure that this is sort of level. So I think south is this way, but we want to make sure this is flat. So if you've got a bubble level, particularly, level on each axis, so you could just adjust each leg as you go until you get it. Now I just did the first leg there. Now I'll point it straight up to the next leg. And that could probably come up a touch or down a touch maybe. There we go. And then the third leg. You know what they say about the third leg. Now that'll be in the middle, wherever we go. Perfect level, baby. You're gonna provide that for me with that? Yes, see the bubble? Now the head, which is this way. I think, Whew. Now I remember why I wanted an observatory. Okay, yep, I was right, that is south. You should see that little hole. When it's on right, you should see this little hole sink up the screw hole there. The hole appears, you know we're in the right location. You'll notice I'm a bit skew if here with these. Obviously these will be adjusted when we do the polar alignment. I have no idea if these were the things that go in here, but they seem to fit and screw in, so <laughs> that'll do. It'll stop it from falling off anyway. And now for every young couple's favorite moment, the shaft insertion. I think I might adjust these, get this in the middle, plug it in, see if it works. Now, I was complaining about Allen key and hex key type attachments in a previous video, but one of you correctly noted that it is better than uh, screws for this sort of stuff because you can st strip the screw heads and that's probably more of a pain in the butt. It is nice though if, if these had sort of thumb screws that you could just loosen with your thumbs, but it probably is good to keep it solid with a hex key like this. That's centered now, but we can adjust those properly later. This is my trick for 
roughing it in. I put sky guide in fast forward mode, then put it in compass mode, and I can see where the South Celestial Pole is. I can see it's up there, sort of pointing towards the corner of the house. At this point, we can just pick up the whole thing and shuffle it around. And that should be roughly south. Now to get the CGX back in its box, I had to put it back to this angle on the latitude. So I'm going to adjust that with these two big knobs. You know what they say about big knobs. I oh, know. These are just to loosen them off. That's right. And you use the big knob at the back. Good morning, Arnie at the back to get it to 28. I'm minus 28, which is the same as Florida. Cape Canaveral is plus 28. I'm just on the other side of the earth. Somewhere for the hand controller to live. Plugs in, in one of the oxes. Boom, power. Success. I did actually have a dead power supply, uh, which almost put a stop to this whole video. CGX ready, enter to begin, switch position. That doesn't look like zero. Oh yes, it does, it's backwards, isn't it? Forgot about that. It's backwards to get in the box. All right, guess I better find something to put on this. Something massive, because it's uh, not the size that matters. It's what you do with it. Do you reckon it'll balance? Yeah, I don't think I'm even gonna bother balancing. I know the CGX can handle that. Okay, time, 11. Okay, solar system alignment. It should be going to the sun. I think I need a hat. Jesus Christ, I need a hat. Well, it's in the right direction. That is pointing at the sun. Now to find it on screen. Well, that was easy. I thought I'd be mucking around for ages. It's not drifting too bad. So even my rough alignment, which you just witnessed, is good enough for that. What do you reckon, Midi? Pretty good, eh? Look at that, sunspots, flares, prominence, three and a flare, maybe. Nice. Ooh, clouds, typical, just as I get going. Bit of dirt on the camera, but not too bad. Let's try and get this upper region. A lot of action in there. Well, that was a success. My CGX is working again. I believe they swapped the belts out and retentioned everything, which is clearly something I'm too incompetent to do because that's what I was trying to do before. And I must have messed it up royally. Anyway, I'm so glad that the CGX is working again. It gives me a spare mount to use for travel or just setting up on the deck. Anyway, hopefully I got some images out of that. I was just using the little dinky Intel laptop and fire capture. Now I'll stack them and if something worked, I'll put them after this. But before I do, just stick around just for a sec, just so I can tell you about the new show sponsor. If you know me, you know I'm addicted to learning. Uh, once I went on holiday in Fiji and when I came back, I was enrolled in a master's degree uh, because like many people, I actually find learning to be a form of entertainment and Brilliant actually makes the learning process interactive. So for example, when I went to university, I was told I should read this book from cover to cover. Now I could do that, or I could take the astrophysics course on Brilliant and take it in bite-sized interactive chunks, which is especially good because it means you can jump in at any level. And the best thing of all is you can do this for free. You can do this now, like literally right now, you can go for free and try it out for yourself. And even better, Brilliant have reached out and said that the first 200 viewers of this video will be able to get 20% off by using the link brilliant.org forward slash Dylan. I have to hand it to Brilliant for recognizing that the people who watch my videos are also brilliant. And they have courses like in solar energy or special relativity that are really perfect for astronomy people like us. So that link again is brilliant.org forward slash Dylan. That's right, I am the Dylan on Brilliant. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and let me know how you go if you do sign up. I'm currently going through the astrophysics course myself. All right, now I'm gonna show you this amazing solar image I took. For some reason, it just turned out better than the images that I've done before, even though I've used this exact same rig before. Uh, maybe it was the conditions. I have a few theories, but let's take a look at this image.
As you probably know from my style already, I've gone for a super luminous image. But there's another little trick that I've employed here, and that's the inversion of the surface layer. Inverting the sun's surface normally leaves you with a white image, and if you've colored it orange, then the surface becomes like a bluey color. It looks pretty cool too, but what I've done here is used a separate exposure for the outer layer where I can see the flares, and then a separate exposure for the inner layer. And when I've added the outer layer on top of the other layer, I've set the blending mode to difference, which then inverts the inside of the image, but leave me with that inverted surface. Now that means that the sunspots look like flares and the flares look like sunspots. So it's not scientifically accurate, but it is visually stunning. Also pulled the white point of the levels up so that the flares look really like they're burning. It gives the plasma that really luminous quality, which as you know, I love in my particular style. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this image and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks again to Brilliant, the show sponsor. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. Yeah.